Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. This is the Ubermacht SC-1, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is the second most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with 18 votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured by clicking on the link in the description down below. And it seems like uh, last week, there was some pretty universal hatred towards uh, one of the cars that we tested. And nobody likes the looks of it, nobody likes the way it drives. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? However, the SC1 is a rather good car. Um, you know, it's one of those cars that I think a lot of people forget exists, which I can understand that, uh, simply because, you know, it's not a record setter, it's not the fastest top speed, it's not the fastest around the track, and as we're gonna see, it's not the fastest supercar off-road either. Um, you know, so it just kind of came out and was just there, and I'm sure it has an exorbitant price tag, though I don't know what it is because I didn't bother to look it up. But a lot of people forget that this car exists. I like it, though. Um, I have a big Ubermacht collection. In fact, I think I own every Ubermacht in the game, except for maybe one variation of the Oracle. I don't remember which one, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I have them all. Uh, and, and I like this car. I think it looks great. I think it drives nice. Uh, it does have some issues here and there, uh, but here in this situation, it actually does rather decently. Um, it's going to beat out a lot of other supercars, that's for sure. I can tell you that much right now. You know, I don't want to spoil it for you, but hey. Um, but yes, it kind of did spoil it, didn't I? But I didn't tell you what position it came in. Uh, so anyway, but it's a good car. I like it. It's rear wheel drive, uh, has a decent amount of power, uh, is in it doesn't have too much of a struggle to put that power down. I, Unlike a lot of other supercars where I find myself struggling to find that balance uh, in the throttle to where I can actually get the car moving at a decent speed while not having the rear wheels just spinning, I, I did not have that struggle in the SC1 at all. It did really well. Um, so, you know, very cool, and I'm happy to, to report back that it, it did really good. So I did manage to jump off the side of the trail with it a little bit. Kind of had to deviate. Commander Hobo made some wise crack about that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he's right behind me in his brand new Huntley. Uh, and, and he made a joke about me missing the trail a little bit. But you can see we've got a pretty decent time here. Uh, you know, we're already up to the top at that two and a half minute mark now it's just going to be a matter of finding grip for this climb right here that was the only place that this car really struggled and posed any type of problem we are up though in two minutes 46 seconds so will it off-road sure it will but again like most supercars i don't recommend it because it's a supercar not an off-road vehicle that said, though, you know, if you find yourself driving it and you get stuck in an off-road situation, you're going to do okay. You're not going to have too many problems. Uh, now we go to the controlled descent, where it's mostly the same story. We'll take a look at things as they transpire. But since it's a decent car to drive, I wasn't really anticipating too many problems. I did notice during the ascent, uh, as we went over some bumps, the back end was... Uh, keen to come up off the ground a little bit more than I would like and you can see already as we go downhill as we go into some jumps that's the same case uh, and, and we're, we're jumping a little bit more than I would like uh, I kind of like to keep the wheels on the ground when off-roading simply because there's just way too many places that if you're in the air well you're not on the ground able to brake and control the car and there's just too many opportunities to go flying off the mountain um, in an off-roading, you know, there's too many opportunities to accidentally slip into a river or to go sliding down into a ravine that you're going to be spend the next hour getting uh, unstuck from. So, yeah, and it also causes you to spin out. You know, had that been on a ledge when that spin out occurred, I would have went flying over that ledge. So, it is a bit of a liability when it comes to how it handles the bumps. Though, you can see, though, in the actual jumps its landing does fairly well, which is kind of surprising. Usually when they don't deal with the bumps, they don't land very well either, but this one did all right. And there I go, breaking in midair. Somebody was giving me grief in Discord the other day. 
asking why I always break midair. I don't know. Why do you break in midair? Probably so that my wheels will be locked up when I land, which is probably a very bad idea, but whatever. I do it anyway. And I'll probably never be able to break myself with a habit, so deal with it. Did have a bit of an issue coming up right there, and that's my fault, not the cars. Just tagged that uh, log just a little bit, sent me into a slight spin over to the side. Commander Hobo taking one heck of a shortcut there. Uh, but hey, at least it gets some screen time, and, and that's always the only important thing. I managed to clip the edge right there where it uh, is embanked. Or an embankment, I guess, is what those are called. An edge that is embanked. Beautiful, Brandon. That was that was some very clever, clever English thing you did. Anyways, and I managed to roll the car because I clipped it just enough speed and boop, right over I went. Speaking of rolling the car on the control descent, I uh, join our Discord and take part in the conversation about will it off-road bingo as we're down to two minutes thirty nine seconds. By the way. I am putting that together now. I've got a lot of stuff already in there, but I would love to have your suggestions for items that should appear as uh, possible tiles on our Will It Off-Road Bingo. So we're back at the top of Mount Chiliad. Well, we're flying down it now. Just to see, you know, how well this thing withstands falling off the side of a mountain. How much damage you can expect. And this does tend to give a pretty realistic estimate of what type of damage you might see, and that's why I do it. You know, there's going to come a time when you're off-roading that you're going to have a mistake, or the vehicle you chose isn't going to be quite up to the task at hand, and you're going to have a rollover, or two, or three, or you'll fall completely off a mountain. Um, so it's a good idea to know, you know, what kind of body panels come off. How easy does it, does, do the wheels bend? Uh, is it going to deform so bad that I can't drive it anymore? Is the engine going to get damaged? You know, I do all of my vehicles that I test uh, in 100% armor, unless indicated otherwise, which usually means in story mode for a vehicle that can't be tested in uh, GTA Online easily. But, yeah, so we always do 100% armor. God, I had that lined up, and the commander came in and tapped me. So this does give you a pretty good estimate of how a vehicle is going to handle in those situations. And what it takes to even get it back under control. And there he goes again. Almost. I was literally turning to get lined up to go to there. And then big SUV driver. Typical SUV driver, I swear. What are we going to do with those people? But, um, yes, yeah, see one not so happy down here in the bumpy muddy bits. Uh, just not handling it very well at all. Makes just a really ugly crash into the log pile there. But speaking of logs, just wait till the next vehicle. It gets even better. But we're down 1 minute 49 seconds. Let's take a look at our damage. The windshield's gone. Most of the lights are busted. Both the doors are missing. There is ever so slight body damage, especially there in that right rear quarter panel. And the wheels are bent. But that's going to bring us to our next vehicle. Oh, sorry. No, it's not. We're going to look at Commander's Huntley for damage first. I always forget that. So there you go, kind of beat up, yeah. Anyway, now we're at our next vehicle, the Canis Camacho. And this one definitely ran away with the votes. 82 votes for the Camacho. And to the person who kept voting for it, I've seen your votes over the past few weeks. You'll do like two or three, and then this past week, you put the hammer down, and you decided that the Camacho was gonna be in this week's video because there were a lot of votes. And I want to say thank you. Whoever you are, I don't know because Google doesn't record user data. It just shows me a timestamp of when people vote. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, the SC1 was not really the second most sort of four vehicle this week. I just did not have access to the second most sort of four vehicle this week at the time of recording. I will try to uh, get with somebody that I know, um, a.k.a. Schwinn, Patreon supporter. Because, uh, yeah, I think he has the Cerberus, and that actually has 60 votes right now. So it should appear in next week's video unless something weird happens. Um, so we'll see. Speaking of weird things happening, um, we are witnessing something really cool right here. The Camacho is a very, very good off-road vehicle. Has a good 50-50 split on the power. Does not have a very high 
off-road traction loss, I think it's 0.15. So nothing too significant. Um, it does really well. About the only place that I really ran into any issues, and it's not during the ascent, it's during the control descent, is in braking. The brakes could be a little bit better. Um, but this thing just goes. Like, it has a lot of power, but it never struggles to put that power down. It just grips and goes forward, which is exactly what you what you want when you're off-roading, is you want something very reliable. However, uh, it does suffer a little bit from understeer, and you can see that as those tires do grip a little bit, they do cause it to kind of uh, hunt around for the path they want to take. But once you get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. This was my second or third run up the mountain. I practiced a couple times because I really wanted to make sure I had it down with this. Uh, but if you're paying attention to that counter in the bottom right, yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. I mean, even with this little bit of an error right here, again, because I underestimated how wide the vehicle was and, and kind of set it to the side, even with that, we are up 2 minutes, 26, almost 20 seconds, sec 27 seconds. Will it off-road? Oh, yeah. Not only will it off-road. You can hear me tapping my note card here. That makes it the fastest land vehicle, period, that I have tested in will it off-road. Faster than even the trophy truck, which has held that top spot for a long time long time it beats it by oh about four and a half seconds yeah the camacho beats the trophy truck four and a half seconds despite the fact that the camacho weighs more has a lower max speed although it does also have a lower drag and i think maybe that has a little bit to do with it um however the camacho has a few things going for it one is if i'm not mistaken in the handling files i'm not glad that this happened actually that i went off because it demonstrates that you know every vehicle that has a lot of travel and the suspension can bounce around but also once i get off this boulder watch how effortless this thing just goes back up to the trail it's pretty impressive but anyways this thing has really good uh straight line grip and i think that that helps it a whole lot even though that we are off-road but it also shifts gears quicker if I'm reading the handling files uh, correctly, those little things add up and means that we beat a record that has been held for a very, very long time. And it also is the very first land vehicle to beat the two and a half minute mark. Uh, the trophy truck was like 234, 236, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, beating that 230, I think the Camacho is probably going to be in the lead for a long time. I could be wrong. Uh, I really don't see anything getting up there that quick, though, uh, anytime soon. Mainly because Rockstar doesn't really make the best off-road vehicles, honestly. Um, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my God. And yet, yeah, I saved it. I saved it. I'm so proud of myself. Anyway, um, yeah, Rockstar doesn't always make the best off-road vehicles as we go flying. Um, so we don't really get to see these type of times very often. You know, it's the trophy truck and desert raid, and then everything else that was a few seconds slower. So, again, to the person who voted for the Camacho, thank you, because I got to do this. I got to set a new record, and I was very excited. Like, I knew driving up we had gone up the mountain really quick. I thought maybe, you know, we were, like, near where the trophy truck was. I had no idea. No idea that we beat it until I actually started editing the video. So, very, very, very cool. By the way, if you're wondering about the SC1, you can look at the timer for yourself. And where it lands, uh, it was 12th out of 32 supercars. Uh, just behind the T20 by one second. It did knock the Autark out of the top 25. Um, by about two seconds. So it is the 25th fastest vehicle. Um, 24th if we're counting just land vehicles. Don't forget, we do have a helicopter artificially sitting at number one. Yeah, I don't count it. That's why I'm saying this is the fastest. And you may notice Commander Homo is also in a Camacho. He couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to test, so he's like, eh, we'll just do two Camachos. 
So the support truck is the same as the truck going down the hill. And landing on my ass and it took some of my health. Who knew? Also took off my tailgate. Which is fine. Weight savings, right? Yes. This damage to set was a pain, by the way. It's just, again, just this truck's so big. And it's wide. And it's tall. It, it just... It's constantly hitting something. So trying to get it back on its wheels. Going in a, you know, forward direction. Or something resembling it was a challenge. It just wanted to keep catching on stuff and spinning around and rolling over and all that good stuff. But hey, you know what? It handles this stuff really well. And look at that. It had enough air that without any effort whatsoever just skimmed right across those railroad tracks. I thought that was pretty cool. Sadly, the train was a little bit late, so we didn't get another close call with the train. Shed the hood for some reason there. Get, trying to get straightened out and finally Commander Hobo's love taps actually helped me. Now check this out with this little log pile. Um, these are not really good for when you're wanting to actually go somewhere to land on because I just managed to send them off flying. But we are finally down. One minute, 40 seconds. This Commander Hobo just can't drive today. Let's take a look at the damage with the windshield gone. Most of the lights gone. The front bumper was wiggling around so it is loose. The hood and the tailgate are gone and it has slightly bent wheels and we'll take a look at commander's camacho as well and it's pretty much the same story bunch of busted windows and you know some banged out lights and stuff like that but that is going to do it for this record setting will it off-road don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in future will it off-road vehicles by clicking on the link in the description down below and come help us put together the Will It Off-Road Bingo by joining our Discord server, which is also in the description down below. Until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.